New tonight, court documents show the murders of an elderly couple may have been fueled by a so-called carnival mafia. Where is the couple that that own this this camper? Large shallow grave in uh, in the middle of a creek bed. The three individuals we have in custody followed them into their camper and then shot them. Why they were murdered may be in a confession to police. An elderly couple enjoying their golden years were murdered and a confession to police shows those behind the killings thought they were carrying out the wishes of a so-called carnival mafia. Welcome to Unnatural State of Crime. I'm Joe Ellison. In July of 2018, Alfred and Pauline Carpenter traveled from their home in Wichita, Kansas to attend the Barton County Fair. It was only a couple of hours from where they lived. They were vendors on the road, setting up a booth and selling treasures on the fairway. Though this would be their last county fair, they were robbed, murdered, and driven more than six hours away where their bodies were left in a creek bed. What happened to this retired couple? Who would want to harm them? A confession pointed to the hierarchy of traveling carnival workers in a sinister plot of initiation. But is it true? Is there a crime boss and mafia dealings on the fairway? This is the story of the so-called Carnival Mafia murders. So we're in one of the most remote portions of Crawford County. We're a mile from the Washington County line on Highway 59 off a little, little road called Star Road. It was about this corner. And when they looked over, they could see they could see the the mattress, which obviously didn't belong here. Um, you know, whenever you see something like that, especially on the side of a creek bank, it, if it doesn't belong, there's something wrong. And whenever they went over, that's when they discovered the bodies. In July of 2018, James Miris worked as a patrol sergeant for the Crawford County Sheriff's Department. He remembers being called to the scene of where the bodies of Alfred and Pauline Carpenter were discovered. We pulled up, we, we come with you know a good, good portion of our department. We brought a command center up here, established it, taped off a, a very large area. When we got here, they were covered up with a mattress. Um, it was laid over the top of the bodies and there were, there were just several rocks that were kind of just positioned everywhere. With it being such a remote area north of Van Buren, Arkansas and in a national forest, investigators knew someone was familiar with this area, enough to know the road was there, but not familiar enough to drive too far into the wooded area. I would imagine that they would have had to have stopped right here. You know, the creek bed would have been dry at that point, so they probably could have went on through. But looking at this, we know it's not a road that's easily traveled. And as you can tell, there's grass growing up in the middle of it, so they probably made the assumption that it wasn't traveled very much either. There's, there's a few private, you know, residences that are around here. And what you see is what you get with this creek, you know, further, way further up into Washington County. It opens up and it's bigger. This is not a common swimming hole. It's, it's not a common place for people to come. You know, most, most of what you see on, on this side of the road is privately owned. So this is kind of where we think they probably just stopped, disposed of their bodies, and then went on into town. How the bodies of Alfred and Pauline Carpenter were discovered in that remote area started with a phone call to police. About 30 minutes south of where the bodies were found in Arkansas is the city of Van Buren. The police department received a phone call in July of 2018. It came from an apartment complex only a few blocks away from that police station. What that person told police led them to believe the carpenters' bodies were inside of a camper and parked at an apartment complex for several days. Our dispatch center got a call from a lady who was in Texas, who claimed that her sister had contacted her, said she was in an apartment here in Van Buren, and that she was with some people who were traveling with the carnival, 
and that they had come here from Kansas and that somebody had already been murdered. She was scared and so you know, she called her sister and her sister called 911 and said, hey, my sister just called me and explained to me that you know, she's traveling with these people and they've possibly murdered somebody in Kansas. Can you send somebody out there to see what's going on? Officers on scene go to the apartment complex. They start talking to the people who live there. They discover the tenants had guests staying with them. Kimberly Younger, Michael Fowler, Rusty Frazier, and the sister of the woman who called from Texas, Christine Tenney. The patrol officers had already noticed the camper and it had Kansas plates on it, returned out of Wichita. And so um, these people had had traveled from a carnival in Great Bend, Kansas. Police say the out-of-town visitors showed up at the apartment complex driving a truck and pulling a camper. After running the license plates, police discovered they both belonged to Alfred and Pauline Carpenter. Well, at that time, we were trying to determine, you know, where is the couple that, that own this, this camper? Where are they at? One person seemed to be doing all the talking. Of course, we got several stories from the suspect. Uh, at the time, we knew her as Myrna Khan. She had given us a fake name. Uh, of course, now we know her to be Kimberly Younger. She had given us a story that uh, this couple had rented a car and just left the camper there. But police take a look inside of that camper. There was um, a couple of bullet holes, uh, one through the floor and one through the front uh, part of the camper. And so we were able to determine through that that a shooting did occur in the camper. Police believe the bodies of Alfred and Pauline Carpenter set inside of the camper parked at the apartment complex for several days before being dumped in the National Forest. They were parked over here by the pool and behind the office. And there was about five or six guys back there on their lawn chairs by the trailer. At the time neighbors were interviewed, they saw that camper and were shocked to later learn what was inside. Well, first I saw it over at that first parking space right there. But when the police and stuff had come and arrested them and were towing the vehicle, they were here and their campsite was under that tree right there. Police took all of the suspects in for questioning. They would eventually learn where Alfred and Pauline Carpenter's bodies were. But while trying to figure that out, they uncovered an evil plan orchestrated by one of those suspects. Police believe she was manipulating the others by pretending to be a mafia boss within that traveling carnival. This is how police uncovered the so-called carnival mafia. This is not uncommon with a homicide investigation, but we got nothing but lies at first. And then finally, one of them started giving us information about what really happened. Michael Fowler opened up and a shocking and evil plan was revealed. He told police the Carnival Mafia had instructed them to rob Alfred and Pauline. There at the fairgrounds in Great Bend, Kansas, kill them, put their bodies inside of the camper and drive to Van Buren, Arkansas until they could come up with a plan to bury them. We know that they were at the same carnival, um, conducting business at that carnival, so we believe that's the connection between the uh, suspects and the, and the victims. This couple that was killed, they're an elderly couple. They were uh, uh, on the verge of retirement. They were trying to sell their equipment. This was supposedly one of their last carnivals that they were gonna work and they were gonna get out of the business. Police have said they believe the Carnival Mafia was created as part of an initiation of sorts. Along with threats of violence and belonging, people could be manipulated into doing work for the Carnival Mafia. Six, I'm Erica Thomas. And I'm Darren Bob, one person accused of killing the couple at a fair in Kansas and driving their bodies to Van Buren told police the Carnival Mafia dictated the disposals of those bodies. Five News reporter Joe Ellis joining us live in Van Buren with the latest on these confessions. Police arrested four people. One of those people, Michael Fowler, told police in a confession he met the couple at the fair in Kansas, and it was the Carnival Mafia that ordered their death through media messages. Police 
say there is no Carnival Mafia, but they believe the messages and instructions to kill were real and elaborately orchestrated by Kimberly Younger. She was using a social media account for this Frank person, and it was later determined through some analysis on her phone that those messages were actually being sent through her phone to her. So um, she would log into this Frank person's account and send these messages and then she would show the rest of the team that, hey, here's, here's the messages that I'm getting from Frank. And she somehow convinced these people that that was, that that was the case. Um, we're not even really sure. There's been very little cooperation from Kimberly Younger. She, um, you know, she, for whatever reason, she has never come out and said why she orchestrated this. Uh, in fact, um, you know, from talking to her, she, I think, is convinced that she, that she didn't do this, that, you know, she continues to deny it, uh, even though the evidence suggests that, that she orchestrated the whole thing. Police say through the interviews, they learned how Alfred and Pauline were killed. With the help of Kansas authorities in this multi-agency investigation, a bloody crime scene was uncovered at the fairgrounds in Kansas. Uh, Mr. Carpenter was actually shot and stabbed, and Miss Carpenter, who was actually in, in her bed at the time, she was shot. And so uh, we believe there's the evidence that, that we got from processing the crime scene is that it occurred right there in, in their camper. Um, the, the possible motive, um, you know, we still don't 100% know, but um, the likely motive was robbery. Um, all of their items had been, um, you know, taken. They had um, some money that was missing, and then they had a trailer full of goods um, that, you know, they were selling at carnivals. When we uh, investigated that here in Van Buren, some of that property was in different locations. Um, the, the actual trailer was located in Fort Smith near the fairgrounds. And um, so they, they had already started to get rid of this property or sell it, whatever it was that they were doing. Um, so it's, um, I mean, it's a very unfortunate event because this couple uh, was retired and this is what they were doing for their retirement. And, um, you know, they, from everything that, that we've talked about with other people um, is that they were, they were great. I know that she was, had dementia and um, it was progressing. So it could have been that they were easy targets. There's no telling. It could have been that they were the last people they're tearing down. Um, unfortunately, those are answers we'll probably never know. I've, I actually talked to the family members a little bit through the trial because we had to go to Kansas a number of times to uh, to testify, and so we're there several different several days in a row, and so I've had interaction with the family, and um, you know just the way everybody talks, they were just they were great people, and for whatever reason, Kimberly decided to to end their lives through this this thing. All four suspects were extradited back to Kansas, where they faced justice. Kimberly Younger, the person police say was the mastermind, was convicted of capital murder. She was sentenced to life without parole. Rusty Frazier was sentenced to life without parole as well, but for 50 years for each of two counts of first degree murder. Michael Fowler was sentenced to life for first degree murder and theft. Christine Tenney, the woman whose sister called police, was sentenced to eight months for obstructing apprehension and was also sentenced to nearly six years in prison for aggravated robbery. That's the story of the so-called Carnival Mafia. Police say it's not real, but for those involved and who committed this heinous crime against Alfred and Pauline Carpenter, they believed it was. Some of the suspects have either tried or are now appealing their convictions. None have been able to get a court to agree so far. That's it for Unnatural State of Crime. Join me next time as we explore another unnatural case.